Good afternoon and welcome to the 21st annual exhibit of Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technologies. Uh, we invite you to sit down and have a drink. The drinks are on the house. We'll be discussing a number of issues. We've heard the word safety about three times today. Uh, it is an issue because there's a subjective side to this, that is how safe are fueling stations. People get nervous not realizing that gas stations are actually probably more dangerous than fuel stations. Uh, but it is an issue, it involves research, it involves uh, institutes that dedicate themselves to this new technology. We'll be talking to a specialist right now, Dr. Thomas Jordan, Jordan from HiSafe, um, Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, about research priorities for hydrogen safety. Please welcome with me, Dr. Thomas Jordan. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. So. Uh, First of all, I want to introduce uh, my colleagues who contributed to this presentation. Uh, it's uh, besides myself, Hervé Batelmi from Air Liquide, then Marco Kakassi from University of Pisa and Jay Keller. Uh, they have been driving this uh, uh, identification of research priorities for hydrogen safety. Now. I guess I can change slides myself. Well, okay, here we go. I will shortly introduce uh, HiSafe as an international association which is dedicated to the issue of hydrogen safety. Um, uh, secondly, I will show you how we de develop further the state of the art. And in a closing part, uh, or the major part actually, I will give you the current research priorities as an outcome of these uh, activities within HiSafe. Now, what's HiSafe? HiSafe is uh, a non-profit organization which was founded in 2009 as a follow-up of a European network of excellence, which has started actually in 2004. The idea was to integrate the uh, safety-specific knowledge European-wide at least, but we even had these days Canadian partners, um, uh, Russian partners. Uh, in the meanwhile, we uh, act as a non-profit organization or a, a international association with 35 members uh, coming from public institutions, from national labs, universities, also industry, that's very important, and uh, private persons and partially small, medium-sized enterprises. So the activities are organized within uh, four committees or by four committees. We have the conference, which is our major activity, I would say. Then we have the research uh, committee, which, which is dedicated to actually what I want to tell you today. Then we have industry relations, because, uh, well, safety is a applied topic. Hydrogen is neither safe or or nor unsafe, so the application makes the, the gas safe or non-safe. Uh, finally, we have uh, Mr. Schmidtchen here today, who is uh, responsible for uh, public relations and uh, communication. What's the mission of uh, our, our activities or our association? The vision first is uh, that hydrogen will be introduced as a safe and sustainable energy carrier. So we share this maybe uh, among most of uh, you here. Um, secondly, more important and more specific is the mission. Uh, we want to facilitate the international coordination, the development and dissemination of hydrogen safety knowledge. So actually to define the state of the art here uh, by being the focal point and uh, well, for, for, for those uh, dedicated topics like safety research, education and training. <coughs> this is how a focal point may look like. Maybe more relevant are these, uh, well, sides of this, uh, well, not circle. Um, well, here on the left-hand side, you see all these research uh, and demonstration projects. Um, most of them financed by either national or European money, at least uh, if we have the European focus. Uh, then 
more internationally, we have the international standards. Even in European uh, frameworks, we tend to adopt international standards instead of promoting national standards. So it's all about also harmonization and uh, well, the modern approach even, even makes uh, regulation the, the uh, um, obligatory uh, framework referring to these international standards. So on, on the bottom side or the, the ground pillar here is actually these education and training activities where you see two things, the laser doesn't work. This is the research priorities and this is the ICHS. I will detail a little further. Um, before I want to show you all the activities like a, like a puzzle, a big puzzle, what is uh, currently done. We have the knowledge dissemination mainly by currently by the conference. By the way, the next conference will be organized next year in Hamburg, not far from here. Then we have this uh, other pillar, the research priorities workshop. You see um, one, one uh, front page of, of, of the recent uh, issue of this. Uh, then we have the uh, uh, incidents and da accident database operating, which is uh, well a, a pool of, of, of uh, ex uh, experience, which is maintained currently by JRC, by our partner JRC. Uh, then we have, of course, the biannual report on hydrogen safety, which is now called uh, Hydrogen Safety Handbook. So this, uh, these are just a few glimpses, and I will focus, as I promised, on these two things. Uh, how do we actually develop further the state of the art? Uh, the first activity is uh, about the research priorities. So here we try to identify those research activities deemed to be most critical for um, at least the invited uh, experts. So these are coming from industry and from academia. So we, we try to have both worlds integrated in this activity. Uh, it's usually on invitation. Uh, the last one was organized in Washington. And again, we issued a report. I'm going to show you the major content soon. So usually the members well, rank those topics identified by a sort of voting. This is a classical way to do. There are almost, uh, let's say, infinite uh, ways to do these things, but a classical PERT activity, for instance, this is a, a phenomena identification and ranking table, is an established standardized procedure. We follow this more or less in this workshop. The other big component in this interplay is the conference. So the conference uh, offers uh, information exchange on the state of the art and on the priori priorities. Uh, it has a focus on safety, purely on safety. It's a very sp specific uh, conference. So it's not just another generic hydrogen conference as they are popping up here and there. It's we have a highly active active participation here with 200 par participants. It's organized every two years, so this keeps this number high. Uh, typically, we have about 100 uh, papers or presentations there in three days in three parallel tracks. So it's unique worldwide. It's supported by the major players as they are listed down here. So the US DOE supports it, the European uh, financial institutions and, 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 and uh, resources support them. The ISO, the relevant uh, ISO technical committee supports it. And uh, even the local organizer has to support it, of course. So here you see what, what happened in history. Once again, it's a sort of, well, um, a loop which we organize, uh, but what we organize here. Usually first we start with uh, research priorities in the very beginning, 2005, it was a so-called PERT exercise. From this, we try to observe in the conference what, uh, how do we cover, how do we actually fill the known gaps and how does the state of the art progress this way. Usually derived from this conference, we have the updated biennial report. This is a little bit idling currently, sorry, uh, but we, we recover this soon. So just to give you now the recent uh, outcome of this procedure, 
Uh, the last big block is current research priorities, finally. So here's the report. You can download it from the internet or from our website. Here you see uh, the uh, uh, well ranked topics. There was um, a two-stage process. One was the um, um, superior topic, which is called uh, research category. And here you see research category as identified by the participants. QRA means uh, quantitative risk assessment tools uh, was the most uh, prominent and most uh, wanted uh, um, uh, topic. And then we go for the reduced model tools. Then indoor uh, scenarios, meaning releases in closed rooms like here. It's almost closed. Uh, then mainly liquid releases in these uh, closed rooms, then gaseous releases, storage, and so on and so forth. It doesn't mean that here at 2% that this is not important, but currently there are more important things. Um, just to give you a little bit more detail, sorry. Quantitative risk assessment. Uh, within these major topics, there were subtopics uh, to be ranked, and uh, I only give you always the first priority. So user-friendly, industry-focused software tools to enable risk-informed decision-making. So this will be used in the future ISO standards. You are allowed not to use a tabled uh, set of values for safety distances, but there will be a tool to allow you to integrate mitigation uh, technologies to define your appropriate safety distance. So this you can do then with the help of these kind of tools. So I don't read this, it's too much text, time is too short. Well, what happened? Based on this outcome, more or less, the DOE furthered uh, a development which is now published in the meanwhile. It's the so-called HIREM framework or tools kit. Uh, it's a hydrogen risk assessment methodology. It's open for everybody. It doesn't cost you anything like the classical, very expensive tools for these kind of analyzers. And you can go to the Sandia webpage and, and download this, this, this toolkit. It allows you to, well, determine a length of a fire if you have a release of hydrogen. It gives you, well, load profiles on the environment. And from this, you can really have a detailed solid, scientifically based uh, analy analysis of your uh, setting. Secondly, secondly, you have to fill this uh, well, uh, engine with some, some content. And these are the so-called reduced model tools. You cannot go and do a CFD detailed analysis of your refueling station each time you build a slightly different version of your uh, station. So therefore, you need to have fast-running, while well, quasi-analytical tool, which, 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 which uh, are based on, on correlations and a little bit empirical uh, stuff. So this allows you to do a fast uh, calculation of your risk measures. Indoor, well, the most prominent and most critical thing indoors is uh, cryogenic releases, meaning liquid hydrogen release. Why liquid? Everybody accepts that large rollout will be on a liquid basis. I don't pipelines, which might be quite expensive, but if you have a batch transport and have to serve a 100 bus depot with some hydrogen, you're going to go for the liquid instead of a, let's say, gaseous transport. Or you have a 1,000 bar trailer, but even a 1,000 bar trailer is not as attractive as a, as a liquid transport then. So, and therefore, uh, liquid has a certain focus because well, compared to the gaseous uh, scenarios, we even know less about uh, liquid releases, pools, uh, evaporation of pools, multi-phase behavior of these pools. This is quite complex. Again, this uh, reinforces what I just said, uh, but it here's, here it's directly under the physical title, un unintended releases in the liquid form. So here a little less is the gaseous releases, still high pressure releases put a certain hazard, and we don't know uh, e effectively how ignition actually influences uh, the actual uh, risk, whether you ignite an inventory at the edge or in the center, 
this is one of the open questions, you know, conservative assumptions about ignition. Wind sizing and tank protection. I see another colleague here in the background. So the tank issue is a long-standing issue regarding fire protection, for instance, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's mainly uh, the wind sizing and tank protection from, uh, let's say, scientific perspective is still an open point. We have solutions which, which are safe, but maybe we have a, a way to even improve the situation here. Uh, furthermore, enclosure is a general issue regarding venting and mitigation technologies. Therefore, also, let's say, storage in larger containers is, a, is an issue. I come close to the end. Integration platform. Now we return to the infrastructure for the risk analytical procedures. Here it's good to have tools which are able to be operated by non-experts. And for this, we need a sort of integration platform, which is a little bit further away from scientific understanding, scientific way to communicate. So this is the idea behind this. Able to be used in uh, education, easy to use in dissemination of, of results, and not so deep in, in scientific details. <clears throat> so there is, by the way, regarding verification and validation of the models which we try to put into this frameworks. Uh, even uh, a European project started, it's called Susanna. There it's mainly about CFD validation and verification. Uh, you can go in details here on the website of Susanna. Now safety training. We have projects already dedicated to first responders. For instance, High Response is a European project which uh, instructs and, uh, the, the fire brigades how to approach a vehicle fire. Uh, so this is a, a Areva coordinated project and uh, we, 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 we have, let's say, a similar activity on the US side. There is the Hammer facility, for instance. So these things are quite mature in the meanwhile regarding first responders. So, sensors, still an open issue regarding operation under real conditions. This is everything I tell you about this. And once again here, regarding the applications, the major point here is the 700 bar vessel protection, mainly in the case of a fire. Also the venting strategy, meaning uh, what kind of release do you have in a, in, a, in a kind of a TPRD initiation, TPRD is a temperature-induced uh, tr pressure relief device, which uh, is currently uh, industry standard, but the question is how to position and how to direct these devices, how to couple them to the car vehicle infrastructure, and uh, let's say accident management uh, logics which you have in your car usually. So this is uh, actually almost the end. Here's the summary. I, I skip this. More important is you get all this information on our website, which is uh, highsafe.info. Uh, you can send me an email. This is easy. Or, um, well, anyway, uh, uh, let's uh, discuss now, right now. So this is the other choice you have. Uh, thank you for your attention. And thanks again for all my partners and from uh, contributions from DOE and JRC. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Do we have any questions from the audience? Don't be shy. <laughs> Everything's safe. <laughs> <laughs> safety, yeah, maybe everyone feels safe here. There's always, for me, a double edge to this question of safety. Namely, there's objective safety and yeah. subjective safety. Yeah. Um, uh, when I say subjective safety, I mean there is a uh, subjective assessment of risk that has nothing to do with yeah. the objective factors. So Where, how yeah. much time do you spend actually um, uh, correcting the subjective, the misapprehension mm. of uh, hydrogen technologies? This is one of the key activities in the di dissemination, you know. You have to bring it on an objective uh, uh, basis, which is co usually called risk. Mm. You know, risk is uh, simply the, the combination of probability and damage. Mm -hmm. 
probability is a little miracle, you know. You, you have to have good probabilistics to have a solid risk estimate. Mm -hmm. Then comes the uh, perception of these risks. And there is even an ISO definition of safety, which says it's the level of uh, accepted uh, risk. Mm -hmm. So it means uh, that society or individually, I decide whether I accept the risk or not. And this is not depending on technical terms, but it's much more depending on perception, individual benefit, or well, do we need this? Mm -hmm. uh, comparison to alternatives. So these are the important uh, ingredients, you know, to convince about the technology. Uh, 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 objective risk, like 10 to the power of minus six per year, or a micro mort, which was introduced by the uh, <laughs> medical treatments. Uh, it, it's not really convincing. Probabilistic concepts usually don't work because probabilistics are not easy to understand. Therefore, risk is a little bit delicate, but uh, you know, finally, people have to accept these technologies. I, I agree. Yeah. And it's a cultural issue when you think of um, what mm. was that um, uh, probability and damage, uh, one would never get married. Uh, were we <laughs> objective about risk <laughs> calculation? There's a cultural factor involved yeah. as well. And we've been lobbying, of course, for the safety. We uh, continually do comparisons, uh, uh, gas dispersion, the difference between natural gas at loose in a room, with a candle burning or hydrogen with yeah. a candle burning yeah. um, but we recognize that there's that subjective I, I would like to end with a provocative uh, statement which uh, says hydrogen is the safest fuel yeah. Please prove the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this is why I, I, I'm, you know when people say, well, everything is dangerous depending on how you use it. But I would say, no, no, no. Natural gas compared with hydrogen, natural gas is more dangerous. Or uh, LPG. There are studies who yeah. prove LPG is the worst. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we uh, yeah we could talk for ages on this. We'll we'll have to continue. Go to the website and uh, write them an email, and uh, that's where the conversation yeah. continues. Uh, okay. so thank you so much for being here, uh, um, Dr. Thomas jo Jordan from High Safe. Um, hope to see okay. you back next year. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be thank you. continuing. Thank you. We'll be continuing in one minute with our next topic.